Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. So in this one I'm going to be showing you how you can execute JavaScript promises sequentially. So this is the default behavior of callbacks but there are associated problems with callbacks such as the nesting of callback functions so how can you replicate that behavior one after the other without using callbacks again instead using the more modern alternative of promises. So to begin with I'm going to create some new promises that we can work with. So create a new promise by using the new keyword in front of promise and then you pass in a function and that is what's going to be executed. We have available to us here the res parameter when that's called the promise is going to resolve and inside this promise what I'm going to do is to create a set timeout which itself accepts a function. And all I'm going to do here, just for the sake of this tutorial, is say I'm done. And I'm going to set a delay on that of two seconds. And what I'm going to do is store this in a variable so I can reference it. And then copy and paste it. So we're going to have three promises representing three tasks. and I'll change the text so we can see in the console when we're logging things which one is executing. So I'm done, me too, and the last one can be finished. Okay, so now that we have three promises, I'm going to try handling them using async await syntax. So I'll use the async keyword before a function, and that's going to allow me to use the await keyword within this function and I'm going to name this function handle promises and within this function what I'm going to try and do is wait for task one which returns a promise so I can use the await keyword before that and then await task two and then await task three. So I'm going to actually create an array that is going to store the results and then I'm going to await task one and I'm actually going to say here array.push await task one. Okay, and then I'm going to console log the array after I finish waiting and then I'm going to do the same for task two. And I'm going to do the same for task three as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to call this function and then see the result in the browser. And just a clue, it's not going to work as you expect. So you might want to pause the video at this point and think about what the result might be. Okay, so let's look at the result in the browser now. So open the console log and I'll refresh so you can see it in action. Okay, so after two seconds, actually getting the result of all the promises back together. So instead of the first one executing after two seconds and the second one executing two seconds later, we're getting them all back after two seconds. And the reason is that as soon as JavaScript encounters promises, it starts running the promises themselves and then the result is returned after two seconds. So the JavaScript engine is coming across these three promises starting them as soon as we start running our script and they will all finish after two seconds. So what's happening on our handling function is we're awaiting task one and we're actually waiting for two seconds for that but when we move on to task two it's already finished so we don't wait any more time for task two to return a result and we don't wait any more time for task three to return a result either. So the way that we can fix this is to wrap each one of our promises in function scope so they don't run until they are called. Okay, so what I'm going to do for each of the promises here is wrap them in function scope inside function expressions. So I'm going to use arrow syntax because the function can be anonymous. And I need to make sure I'm using the return keyword inside of each promise so that the result of each promise then becomes 
the return value of its function. So I will do the same for the other two promises. Okay, so now that my promises are all nested in function scope, they are not going to execute immediately and they are only going to be executed when their respective function expression is called. So that's what I'm going to be doing now in the handler function. I'm going to be awaiting the return value of calling each of the functions rather than just the value of a variable. Okay, so this should have resolved our problem from earlier now, where the promises were running in parallel. They should now be executing one after the other. So let's see this in the browser. Okay, so refreshing now. Okay, great. So the tasks are now being executed sequentially rather than in parallel. Okay, so this way gets the job done perfectly well if you're using a limited number of promises but it doesn't scale very well in case you've got a lot of promises because each time you have to keep repeating yourself array.push await task one, and then you'd have to keep going four, five, six, seven, etc. So a solution you could use here that would scale is to create an asynchronous loop that will loop through each of the promises awaiting each of them to finish before the next iteration of the loop. Okay, so what I need to do to be able to handle promises in this way is to create a new array that stores a reference to each of my three promises. So I'm going to create a new array here that contains a reference to each of my promises. Okay, so now that I have this array, what I can do inside the handler function is get rid of all of this and I'm going to create a for of loop here so it's going to be for promise of promises and inside I'm going to await each promise and I'm executing each promise in the array and after I've awaited each one, I'm going to log the result to the console. So I'll store the result of each in res, and then I'll log it to the console. Okay, so now the code inside this handler function is much more scalable than it was before. If I create another promise, I would only need to add a reference to it in the array. I wouldn't have to change the code inside the handler function in any way. Okay, so let's check that this loop is executing correctly now. So in the browser, refresh. And everything seems to be working fine. Yes, each of the tasks are completing at a two second interval. Okay, so that is how you would go about executing JavaScript promises sequentially. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, consider hitting the like button down below this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.